Hey guys, as you can tell from the title of this video, this is going to be probably a pretty sad video, but I'm gonna still try to make it as entertaining as possible, even though I'm probably gonna be really sad throughout this video. I feel like it would be really wrong to tell you guys to like this video if you're excited for it, because I, I hope you're not excited for King Henry to die. I don't know, maybe you're excited for Amir to be queen, but maybe just hit that like button if you think I'm gonna cry in this video, because I feel like I am. It's even raining right now. Like, it's raining, it's dark and gloomy. I swear the game knows that something bad is about to happen. So the reason I know this is happening, like with the other monarchs or just anyone in general, it's usually kind of a surprise when they die. But with King Henry, so his thing, his, his life bar thing is all the way up. So I just happened to check and it was all the way up and I was like, you know what? I think it's time. With the whole separate machinima that I did a while ago, the everything is falling apart, which I'll link in the description below if you haven't seen it. When King Henry had a heart attack in there, I feel like it kind of prepared me for this, but I'm still really sad and also slightly not ready. But King Henry has lived a really long life, you guys. So in this video, what we're gonna do, because I saw this thing on Twitter a while ago on how to, is there something that smells over here or something? Someone needs to pick this up. Oh, you know what? I can just pick it up. That's fine. Okay. So I saw a while ago on Twitter that there was this suggestion on if your elder is like about to die, then just have the family gather and hang out with them and then have the elder who's about to pass away, like give away all of their possessions to like their family and people that they want to give it to and that kind of thing, just to make it like special and Oh God, okay, all right, woo. Just to make it like a special thing? I don't know, I don't know how to explain that. It's still depressing and sad. So I do have all of our family here. So that in this episode, we will be hanging out at the Windermere Palace. I'm gonna be going through some like other story plots with you guys. I will talk about the last episode with you guys as well about Azara, but a lot of it is going to be hanging out with the Windenberg family. And a lot of it is probably gonna be like updates and stuff because I want to be here when King Henry does pass away. In here, so, oh yeah, okay. It even says King Henry's long life is coming to an end. It would be a good time to get his affairs in order. You guys, this is so sad. Okay, so I'm halfway using an animation for this because I thought, oh my gosh, Queen, I did not tell Queen Evangeline to do that. She's sitting on the edge of his bed. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, you got... Okay, well, you know what? I So I tried to cheat it a little bit to where they... Well, it went away already. But yeah, I tried to cheat it a little bit to where they had the sad emotion thing buff. I don't know what to call it. But you know what? They're the Sims. It doesn't last. The system in this thing, when someone like actually passes away or when they go through a breakup and stuff, it doesn't last long at all. And sometimes it just goes away and it's really annoying. Like if that were to happen, like your Sim would be sad for a really long time, like more than just two days. But sometimes other moodlets come in and then suddenly they're very happy. So let's just pretend that they're not happy and that they're sad and worried and anxious and tense because King Henry is not doing well. So then I did use an animation here for King Henry to actually lay in bed. So what I did was I figured that he would not actually, oh, Charles is a gloomy slit or slim, Sim. Oh, just like his brother. Kellen also has the gloomy trait. So, so does Charles. We'll talk about Charles in a little bit too. And then we even have like Alice May and Jabari here. Like I have moved the whole family into the window Palace. So I set up like a little hospital area in like King Henry's room and Queen Evangeline's room because I didn't think it would be right for him just to go to a hospital. Like they have enough money to where the best doctors in the world are going to come to King Henry and take care of him and make sure he's comfortable. But I think even they're saying like this is probably it for him. I mean, I don't know. The game is telling us this is it for him too. I have this little hospital set up here. I put a stretcher like in his bed so that way he could be elevated, but like still on his really rich grand and royal bed. And then I used an animation for him to just lay there because I feel like him just walking around and being fine would kind of ruin it for me a little bit and the story. So I have invited over the family members. I feel like a lot of people have already come by to pay their respects to King Henry. So I have invited over like Cora and Anna, both of King Henry's sisters. And then of course, Kellen and Megan too. I think that some other people that have already came by, I feel like Araminta came by just to pay her respects even though things are not going well with Charles and honestly it's probably not a good idea for her to be near Charles just because I think Charles is still really heartbroken with what happened with her. I mean King Henry was always really sweet to her I feel like so I wanted her to come pay her respects at least and I just feel like her and Charles like didn't talk to each other when she came over. Charles is going to counseling and he's doing pretty well. I think that he's still very upset and misses Araminta so so much. It's just like I mean they'd been together and he had a crush on her since they were little. Like imagine it was like King Henry and Queen Alice since they were younger. So that was kind of the whole deal with them. But I think that with the whole counseling, I think he's been able to stay sober since he started counseling. So that's definitely a good thing. And then the whole thing thing with Bellatrix. I will talk about the intro a little bit. So with Bellatrix, I do think that Samaria had told her that Makana and Kimberly were a thing and that Samaria had actually told Makana about Bellatrix now. And Makana, I feel like was a little bit shocked at first, but he is, I mean, okay with it. I think that he does like Kimberly and I think him and Kimberly have been spending a lot more time together. So I think that him and Kimberly might become a little bit more official soon. So that's a thing. So I think that's what encouraged Bellatrix to, oh yeah, if you didn't catch that. So Bellatrix in the beginning, she had come out to her father and then she was coming out or she came out of his room and then it told Charles about it. So that's what they were talking about. So that probably wasn't very clear, but I just wanted to mention that just because I think it was important. And I think it was very important to Bellatrix to come out to her father before he passed away. Otherwise I think that she thinks she would have regretted it. And I think that he took it really well. And I think that she was really happy about that. And that means so much to her too and now her and Samaria can actually like be a thing now so I just think that was really important to her and it was important to me that that happened before he passed away and then of course with Amira so I know in the intro I mean it wasn't like I don't know you guys can tell me what you think it wasn't like a like something dramatic happened in the intro but I think it was important to have that interaction with Amira and her father because I do think that Amira has been doubting herself because she doesn't think that she's prepared to be queen because she hasn't been preparing for it all her life because Kellen was the heir when he was born just because her grandfather, which is King Henry's father, was very, very old fashioned and thought that the heir should be a boy. So that is why. And then I just think that what King Henry said to her was like, 
Oh my god, I just, I really love their relationship, even though their relationship wasn't very, oh my gosh, oh god, no, see, give me your cry, makes me cry, oh my gosh, okay. But yeah, I just think that interaction was important to have with her and her father. I did have Amira not wearing black for a while, but for today, I feel like she should have been wearing black. I just feel like she wears what she wants to, depending on her mood. I actually posted a picture on Instagram of her in her mother's everyday dress that Alice used to wear all the time that I thought was really beautiful. I also posted on Instagram an update on Prince Kellen and Princess Meghan, who they should be here somewhere. I didn't want like everyone just in this room because I didn't want to crowd him and, and just cause too much stress for him. So we have a Queen Cora here or Queen Mother Cora, and then we have Princess Anna also here. So they were already talking to their brother. And then now we have Princess Meghan here and then Duke Kellen slash Prince Kellen should definitely be here somewhere too. And then Lord William should should also be here. I don't know where they are exactly, but they're definitely here. Oh, I think that's Kellen. Is that Kellen? Oh, it is, you guys, this is Kellen. And he's reading a book to Alice May. Oh my God, that's so cute, stop. Oh, he's such a good uncle. Oh, that's so cute. This is his first niece. Like he doesn't have any nieces or nephew besides her. So that's so cute. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then Lord William should also be here somewhere. But I did post on Instagram, just a little update with them, with Kellen and Megan. I mean, you can read that, but basically they're just kind of taking a a break because they or like taking a break from traveling because they were helping take care of King Henry and they want to focus on their son William. They're not going to be having another kid. I think one's enough for them because I think they do want to start focusing more on their charity work again soon. But my Instagram is in the description below. It's Mira Ray underscore Royal. So you can see that I that's the first like big long thing I've posted of just like some story elements on my Instagram, but I might be doing that more often just like some updates on characters and stuff. And then we also have Jabari here. So so I think this is a good chance to talk about the last episode. Well, okay, so first of all, I will show you guys Jabari's family tree because I don't think that I have done that yet. So again, since Selva Dorada and Glimmerbrook and also, what was the other one? Oh, Sulani. Since they're all new kingdoms, I don't have like a big history thing like I did for Windenburg. Like I've tried to kind of like create their ancestors and stuff, but it just, I don't know. There's like some weird glitches that happen sometimes. So it just doesn't work all the time. So just want to let you guys know that. So it's not like too interesting. But the thing that is probably the most important to know is, so, so far we have in here, so we have Queen Abana and we have King Jahim. So Queen Abana, she was the one, she was the daughter of the king and queen. I'm not going to go that far into their ancestry just because it's, it's a whole thing. This, I feel like was around the time where even if she was by blood supposed to be the monarch, like whoever she married was to become king, like instead of like a prince or prince consort. So now we have, for example, like Queen Nea, her husband is prince consort because Nea is the queen and she's the monarch and king always has the more, not dominant, but it's just always above a queen in, I don't know, that's what history says. So I feel like they didn't do that in Selva Dorada before king came in, but his father, so Cayman and Jabari's father, which by the way, some people were thinking that Cayman was Jabari's father but they're brothers. So I saw some comments and was very confused because Jabari and Cayman are brothers. They are not father and son, but their father, King Jahim. So he was married before he got married to their mother, Queen Abana, and then they had two kids, but then his wife passed away. So he had two girls. So he had Amaya and he had Dahlia. Amaya was like way older. Like she's way older than Cayman and Jabari and also actually a lot older than Dahlia too. Dahlia should actually be an elder by now. So there's some, I don't know, some of the ages don't always match up like they're supposed to. But then Amaya, she had Baroness Diana, which was the whole thing with the 100th episode of the royal family in the first season when King Cayman was like saying that Diana was his niece. So it's, I guess, like half niece, but she was around the same age as King Cayman. So I hopefully this makes sense and explains thing a little, explains things a little bit more. But yeah, that's why Cayman is the king and he was like the heir to the throne because his mother was royal by blood. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. If you guys also want to see too. So Dahlia, so she married Michael and they have four 
Squidward kids. So they have Gloria and Chris. And I, I don't know how I felt about these names. I might change these actually. I think they were just like automatic. I just never got around to changing them. But I feel like Chris is, might be short for something else. So Chris and then Ali and Nadia. So those are her kids. So they're not very close with their half siblings. And then we have this whole thing with Cayman and Azara from the last episode. So I've been doing some thinking since the last episode. I don't actually think I'm going to do a machinima to show what happened just because some people made a good point in the comments. It's a lot darker of a storyline than I would like it to be. And I want you guys to like feel happy when you watch my episodes and like, like and enjoy watching them. Like I see a lot of people who say that it just like makes their day and stuff. I'm saying this when it's like the saddest episode ever, but you know, like, you know what I mean? There's obviously gonna be some sad things happening with the whole thing with King Cayman and Azara. So I will explain what happened. Not everyone's gonna agree with this and that's fine. So in the last episode I was saying because Cayman and Azara, so their relationship wasn't very good, but there's actually some history behind them. So yeah, sorry, I would be talking a lot for a second. So there's some history behind them, which I think I had hinted before, but I had never actually explained to you guys. So with Cayman and Azara, so they were kind of a thing before him and Zamora, but I feel like that he fell in love with Zamora and then got married to Zamora, obviously. So that's why Zamora, and I've hinted at this in a machinima before too, Zamora has never liked Azara because she was after King Cayman, and then she continued to pursue King Cayman when Zamora and Cayman were together. But then she finally like gave up and went for Jabari instead. And then she cheated on Jabari after they were engaged. So, I mean, that gave it even more reason for Zamora not to like her because I mean, Jabari is her brother-in-law. Like that is basically like her little brother. And then with King Cayman, so like, yes, he fell in love with Zamora and married Zamora instead. And I feel like him and Zamora, they like love each other so much. Like, I feel like they're a very passionate couple. But with Azara, I kind of feel like Cayman has always had a sweet spot for her. I mean, when Zamora was always talking about how Azara shouldn't be with Jabari and that she's gonna hurt him and all that stuff, I feel like Cayman might have always defended her, which, I mean, leads Zamora to hate her even more. So I think what happened is, I feel like Zamora, she has her own work that she cares about too, kind of like Megan with her charity work. I feel like Zamora has the same thing. I feel like she might go on a lot of volunteer or charity trips, I, not mission trips, right? I think it would be like, I don't know if it's called like a charity trip. So I feel like maybe a year ago, she was gone for the longest time she'd ever been gone. Like I'm thinking like a month or two at least. I feel like during that time, King Cayman was under a lot of stress and he was just dealing with some drama with the boys because the boys were there too. So I think with Zamora, they had been talking one night and they were on the phone and they were arguing because he said that he just wants her to come home and she said, that she just can't right now. Like there's some other stuff that she has to do. I feel like Cayman might have gone to a bar, gone out drinking. I don't know if Kings can just go out drinking. I feel like in Selva Dorada they can. I feel like he was under a lot of stress. I feel like he ran into Azara. I think that Azara had played the card of like, she was upset about Jabari and uh, the whole thing with Amira and that she still wasn't over it. And she kind of like played that weakness, like played the weakness that she knows that Cayman has for her. And I feel like she and him were drinking a lot. Like I feel like she, was letting him drink a lot more than she was. And I feel like that's just what it led to. But I don't think he felt, I don't know. It, I mean, Jabari was clearly over her and like married to Amira now. So that I don't think crossed his mind. I just feel like King Cayman, he made a big mistake. I'm not making excuses for him, but he's human. He made a mistake. He was going through a lot of stress with Zamora. Again, not making excuses for him. It's totally wrong, which is why I don't want to do the machinima because I don't, I think it just, I don't know. It'd make me angry and I don't want it to be like triggering for anyone. One. So now we have this whole thing with Azara, who has not told King Cayman about the baby yet, but we'll definitely get to them in a future episode. I just, I wasn't planning on Azara to be pregnant. I did not make her pregnant. I don't know if this baby is going to be evil when it grows up. We will have to see, but I know that her mother is evil. And I think what Azara plans to do is have her overthrow and like take over the throne. I don't know if that's going to happen. I just wanted to explain that and tell you guys my thoughts on that. And I wanted to like explain the story too, since I'm not doing a machinima for it. So yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. So that was the whole 
myself at erotic thing. I will show you guys the Glimmerbrook royal family tree. I'll try to do that in the next episode because I think we will focus on Araminta in the next episode. I mean, it's nothing special. I, it's it's just like their family. Like I literally have no relations for them at all. But yeah, anyway, so Cayman doesn't know about the baby and Jabari doesn't know about the baby or the fact that his brother hooked up with the Zara. So that's a thing. Okay, I do think that Amira is talking to Jabari though because I think that they have to discuss the fact that they are going to be moving to this palace and it's going to be a big change and like, like their lives are about to change so dramatically. I think Jabari is going to be really supportive of Amira though and be there for her. I kind of feel like Jabari's also missing Salvadorada a bit just because it's where he grew up and that's like his culture and everything so maybe they'll make a trip to Salvadorada soon too. Maybe they'll probably do some like world tour or something like that soon but I know that I feel like Jabari just wants to like be there for Amira right now because like this is her father and I think that I mean I don't know Jabari knows how she feels about her father and how she looks up to her father and even though her and her father like went through some hard times and like didn't really agree agree on everything. Like she's still really close with him and she loves her father a lot. And you guys, Amira has changed so much. Like if you have seen the first season of the Royal Family, you guys know how much she has changed and like, oh no. Oh my, wait, what? When did this happen? Oh guys, why, why didn't the camera move when this happened? Oh my God, it's happening. This is happening. This is happening. Gosh. Oh, it does look like the, cra the crown got passed down to a mirror though from the monarchy mod or the royalty mod. Oh my God. I totally missed this when, oh my God. I'm like kind of sad that they didn't show us that. Like usually like the camera will move to the person dying, but like I kind of missed that. And that all I saw in the room was just like King Henry on the floor suddenly. You guys, he was like the first Sim really that I played with in this series. Like when I started my YouTube channel, like that's such a big thing. And like, I can't even imagine how it's gonna be with like Amira dies. I feel like it's gonna be like way worse. I'm definitely crying by the way. So if you guessed that I would cry, then you were right. Oh my God this is like such like the end of like an era for me like he has been the king for so long and then Amira's coronation ceremony probably isn't going to be for a while probably like three ish episodes maybe this I feel like just is a complete turning point in the series Amira's like she's queen now like she's automatically queen but yeah guys okay they're crying a lot so I'm gonna end this episode here um let me know in the comments below what you think I mean we talked about like the whole Zara thing so let me know your thoughts on that. I don't know. Let me know what you think of King Henry's death. I don't know. That sounds like such a weird thing to say. Let me know if you cried. How about that? In the comments below, let me know if you cried. But make sure you hit that like button if you have not already. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.